Hello everybody and welcome to episode 7 of our tile map tutorial series. Today is a very special topic and that is procedural generation. Alright, let's get started. So right off the bat, you might notice that some of the assets have changed a bit. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that from time to time. Also, we are using Godot 4.2.1, so it should be okay to just update. I didn't have any issues, but if anything, just post them in the comment or go in the Discord and post your issues. Alrighty, so we are not going to be using this world. We're going to actually create a new scene because we want to procedurally generate it. Uh, so we're going to have a new 2D scene. I'm going to call this proc gen world. Okay. And we are going to add a tile map to this world. Okay, let's save our scene. Control S to save. Save it in the scenes file. Save. Let's create it. Go to the root scene. Make a script. Go to the scripts folder and save that. Awesome. I'm going to just delete all of that for now and save the script. And we can actually, you can exit out of the other scenes, but I want to open world two again, because if you look in our tile map in our proc gen world, uh, we're going to need a tile set and we don't want to do all that work of creating the tile sets and the terrains and everything all over again. So an easy way to do that is to come into our old tile map go to the tile set and put save as and I like to save uh, such resource files in a data folder but you can do it how you like and we're just going to save this as tile set and when it's dot trez that means it's a resource so we'll save that and now in our data folder we have this trez file so now when we go to our tile map we don't need to create a new one we can just put our old one in and this has all of the tiles and it also has, uh, the. if we go to the tile map, you'll see it has all the terrains and everything. So it's really great. Uh, one thing it doesn't have is this tree, which we need to add. So I'm going to create tile, go to select and drag it out so that we have the tree. Perfect. This was the old palm tree. We we're moving up in the world now, guys. <laughs> so in order to have procedural generation, we're going to need something called noise. And I'll explain it a bit further, what it does and everything in a bit. But let's just get access to it. So we're going to create a variable called noise height texture and it's going to be of type noise texture 2D. So, so this is a subset of textures. So we're going to use at export so we can get access to this variable in the inspector. And here it says noise height texture. Um, so we're going to create a new noise texture 2D and then we're going to click into it and you're going to see all these different values. And, but what's most important is when we come here to noise. So if you want to read more about this noise texture, of course, come in here, hold down control, and you could read about that and how Godot uses uh, the fast noise light library for noise generators and everything. I suggest you read it in here. Okay, so now we want to go into this noise variable and create a new fast noise light. And you'll see this is the noise. So in order to understand this a bit better in black and white, you can't really tell what's happening here. We're going to, I'm going to use the color ramp. You don't have to do this. This is just for explanation purposes. So, um, in the color ramp, you'll see there's a gradient and that's basically how it's, uh, working. We can go, uh, to the raw data and you'll see basically, uh, if it's zero, it's black. If it's one, it's white. And then there's all shades in between. We're going to come here to constant. Okay, and we are going to push this to the side and since this is our noise height, if the value that we get here is below a certain value, we're going to want to put water. So I'm going to change this to a blue so it could signify as water. If we get uh, a value above uh, a certain threshold, we're going to want to put sand. This is how we're going to be generating our world. If it gets above another value, we're going to put grass. And if it gets above another value, we're going to have cliffs. So let's just signify that as brown. And then when we come up here and we reset it, you're going to see we have what looks like world generation. Here you could see, oh, there's not enough water. And basically how we can get more water is just we make this one bigger. Okay. And then when I refresh, you'll see now there's more water, but now there's way too much. And whatever the this is not uh, the values we're we're gonna be 
uh receiving it's not gonna just turn into this we're gonna have to do it manually this is just to show you how our noise is gonna uh, generate our land masses okay so we did that so now let's go into our fast noise light and you'll see there's a bunch of different noise types and we're gonna mess around with that in the future but for now we're just gonna use simplex smooth uh, the way procedural generation works is you can have all these values the way you like and you're going to be generating different seeds and it's going to use the same values it's just going to give you different variations and that's how it works okay and we're going to basically leave everything else the same so basically the bread and butter of this uh noise height texture is this noise this is what we want access to so we're going to create a new variable called noise and it's going to be of type noise so we're going to get access to that noise in the ready function. So let's do func ready noise height texture dot noise. And we're going to set our noise value equal to the noise from that texture. And remember, you can come in here, control click, and you'll see that it does have a noise. Uh, so what is noise? We can click in here. You can read more information about it. But we want this float. We want this method get noise 2D and it receives an X and a Y. So firstly, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna, uh, for now, let's have a small uh, width and height. So I'm gonna do width equals 100. We could set it to type int, and I'm just gonna copy and paste it and change this to height, cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a function called generate world, and in this function, we are basically going to loop through our width and our height. So for i, uh, let's use x, for x in range width, for y in range height. And we're gonna get a variable called noise value. And basically we're gonna take this noise and remember in here, there's a method get noise 2D. We're gonna use that method. So you should do noise dot get noise 2D and basically we're gonna input this X and this Y and let's print it to see what we get let's see what this noise value is all about and when we print it you see we get these floats that are mostly under one okay and just so, what I like to do to get a clear understanding of the range of these floats is I like to make a noise, a noise value array. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna control K to hide, uh, so we don't need a printer right now. And a noise value array, we're gonna append this noise value. And when all the generation is done, we're gonna print highest and we're gonna do noise value array max so we can get the max value in that and then and then we're gonna get lowest and we're gonna do min just so we could see the range forgot a d there we want append cool so you could see that the range is basically from 0.5 to negative 0.6 so all in all it's about one like that's the whole <laughs> range of everything um that's great nice okay we don't need to do that anymore we don't need to append that's just for demonstration purposes so basically how this works we're gonna open up this grid um and we have our noise on top of it so we we have a, a width and a height so let's say our our width is 200 and our height is 200 as well when we start in this in this loop in this for loop up here for x in range uh x starts at zero so let's say that's zero and y starts at zero remember godot it starts like in this corner so at zero zero uh since this is a, a grass tile it's gonna be over a specific number so maybe since our range is from 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.6 to 0 0.5 we can basically choose an arbitrary point in here where we want to uh place a, a land tile so let's say if it's 
like let's say 0, 0.0 if our noise value is above zero we want land and if it's under uh, the zero we want water and basically our for loop is looping through our width and our height and it's getting the noise value and remember this noise value is returning uh, one, one of this so maybe here it could be 0 0.1 0 0.1 point 0.1 point 0.1 this is going to be the noise value it's returning and since it's here maybe it's negative negative point 0.1 negative point 0.2 it, it's going to just be returning these numbers and we're basically going to be telling it okay if you give me this number so let's let's say if our noise value is greater than zero let's use point zero because remember uh, this noise value does return a float we want to place place a land tile and we'll do pass and we'll do l if the noise value is less than 0, 0. 0.0 we'll do equal to here we want to place water and we'll put pass cool so now let's let's get the tile map and let's actually place those things so we could see how it looks in the world so we're going to need access to um our source id we're going to need access to water atlas and we're going to need access to land atlas so in our tile map if we click it and we go to tile set we'll know that the source id is zero so we'll put that here source id equals zero our water atlas is 0 0.1 so we'll do equals vector 2i 0 1 and then our land atlas is 0 0 cool so let's place the land here so we'll do tile map set cell you should already know how to do this we're just going to put everything on layer one for now and for our chords for the position what do you think the position is going to be where are we going to place it so you could pause the video and find out okay so unpause the video <laughs> uh our coordinates are going to be basically this x and y that we are looping through so we're just going to put x and y okay the source id we already created a variable for that source id and we are going to use for this one since it's greater than zero our land atlas cool and now we could literally just copy this place it here and the only difference is we are placing the water atlas let's run the world and let's see what it looks like that looks pretty good i already added my character in here <laughs> so if you didn't have your character which i haven't showed you yet you can just put a camera let's add the camera and you'll see when we add the camera to the zero zero it's not doing it in the middle and that's really annoying so what we can do is we can come here and we could loop and set through a uh, width because when, whenever you do the size of something it always it, it always starts at zero zero so what we can do is we can make it start at negative width divided by two and then width divided by two and then we want to do the same for height negative height divided by two height divided by two and then this will go in the center and this doesn't give us a large view i want to add our character first so let's come in here choose the paper clip add our player put the tile map and i want to zoom out that's good so you'll see that it looks pretty pretty neat um, we're only doing a very small world. It's only 100 by 100. Let's increase it to 400 by 400. And there you go. It's much bigger. So if you look at this world, and of course, we're not going to play it from this view. We're going to be more zoomed in. And if you say, oh, wow, these land masses are really small. I don't like it. There's a very simple fix with the way we have it set up. It's super easy to adjust the values. We just want to come into the noise. And if you want bigger land masses, you're going to want to adjust the frequency. So the frequency is like zooming in and out of the noise map. So if we want bigger land masses, we want to zoom in 
like this. We want to go to the left. And when I rerun the world, you'll see we have much bigger land masses now. And the inverse is correct. So I could uh, set it back to the normal, which is 0 0.01. And if I zoom out, we have much smaller land masses. And that's why you can adjust these noise values to what you like, uh, whatever fits your game. The last thing I want to show you before we wrap up this episode, uh, I put the frequency back to normal. And I just want to show you that when you change the seed, so right now the seed is at zero, you're going to get the same result. But if you change the seed by one, you get very different result. And that is the amazingness of procedural generation. You put in the variables that you want and the noise, the frequency, uh, you can do all these. You can also mess around, just mess around with things and get values that you like. Remember, you can just use this arrow if uh, to put the, the values back to normal. Let's try Perlin. Let's see if it's super different. It's, you know, slightly cellular. And this is a very good way <laughs> yeah. uh, because of our values. Uh, we would have to uh, print out the noise values and then change the thresholds with different ones. Um, but yeah, m really mess around, go to this fractal, change it to rigid, pe ping pong, uh, go to domain warp. Just get a nice feel for it. Have fun. This is the first step into your procedural generation journey. It's really not that hard of a concept to wrap your brain around. Uh, and the more you use it, the more fun you're going to have. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's make games. Take care. See you in the next episode. Bye. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all the Patreons. If you want to support the channel, consider checking it out to gain access to demos, source code, and behind the scenes. Thank you so much for all the support.